class. So, to, so today we are going to do natural vegetation. Um, in this chapter, you should be able to define what natural vegetation is. So natural vegetation is basically uh, that consists of plants which grow naturally without any human intervention. We have three main types of natural vegetation, forests, deserts, and grassland. Um, you should also be able to establish a link between climate and natural vegetation. So uh, we all know that there are different varieties of plants and all of them do not grow at one place. Now, why is that? That's because we have different rainfall and different temperatures all around the world. For example, uh, um, in the parts of the world where we have hot temperature and heavy rainfall, we can see tropical rainforest over there. Where we have hot temperature and moderate rainfall, we can see tropical grasslands there. So um, I have made this table so that you know you can easily establish a link between climate and natural vegetation. So please learn this table. Then uh, now this basically shows a world view and this basically shows how the natural vegetation is spread throughout the world. So in the Arctic region, we can see that we have tundra forest. In the subarctic region, we have coniferous. Then in the, um, in the north and the south of the equator, in between the Tropic of Capricorn and Cancer, we can see that there are tropical grasslands and tropical forest. So the thing is, um, why, do have, why do we have tundra in Pakistan? Because we over here, we're just seeing that tundra is only in the Arctic zone, but then Pakistan is somewhere here, right? So why do we have tundra? That's because for tundra vegetation, we basically need to achieve a height of 4,000 meter above sea level, which the mountainous areas of Pakistan are able to achieve. Now, this pyramid will help you a lot in a sense that it basically shows the climatic zones. Arctic is towards the North Pole. Tropical is basically the equator because it gets the maximum amount of sunlight. That is why it has a high temperature. And of course, when it, ha it has a high temperature, that means you know more evaporation, hence more rainfall. So wherever there is hot temperature and more rainfall, we can see the tropical rainforest. And then this is a tropical grassland. So please learn this pyramid as well. Now for tropical rainforest, uh, we have already discussed this point. You should also know that the vegetation over there, uh, the trees are tall, they're evergreen and they're very close together. So it basically results in a dense vegetation. Um, over, and also you should know that we have these types of trees which we find in tropical rainforest. Um, now, this is one of the views of tropical um, rainforest. So over here, the branches, uh, they meet up in order, for, in order to form a top layer, which is called canopy. Then we have lianas. Lianas, basically, they wind around the trees and they move high up in, in search of sunlight. And then we have, we have epiphytes. So epiphytes are those small trees which come out of the other trees, right? So they live off the other trees. Now for cold temperate coniferous forest, you should know what the temperature and the rainfall over there is like. And then why do we call them coniferous forests? That, that's because they have conifer trees such as spruce, pine, and fir. So conifers have thick bark and they're evergreen and they have needles but no leaves. Um, now their branches are very flexible so they can, you know, so they can easily bend under the weight of the snow. Now because the vegetation is so dense, that there is very less amount of sunlight that reaches, um, to the, reaches to the plants which are near the soil, right? So that is why there is less undergrowth because we know that sunlight is very important for photosynthesis to take place. Now for tropical grassland, you need to know what the temperature over there and the rainfall is like. And then plants which grow over there are acacia trees, baobab and elephant grass. So you should know these three names. So Acacia tree basically prevents water loss due to, due to its thick bark and small leaves, whereas this tree prevents um, its water loss by storing the water in the large trunk. The other trees are deciduous. Deciduous trees, basically, they lose their leaves in dry season in order to use minimum water. Now, uh, during dry season, because it's very hot and it's dry, so the grasses, the wither, and they turn yellow. And brown. For hot desert vegetation, you should know what the rainfall is like. Um, even though we have short, uh, we have very little or no rainfall, but whenever rainfall comes, it, it basically comes in heavy showers. Then we have various types of cactus over there, uh, for example, prickly pear. So a cactus has long roots, uh, it has waxy tough spikes, and it has no leaves. 
plants found over here are uh, they have a very short life cycle and we can have sandy deserts and stony deserts now before that we've been studying about the natural vegetation all around the world now we need to know what which type of natural vegetation do we have in pakistan so well this shows that we have tundra right so that means 4000 meter above height has been achieved in these areas and then we have coniferous forest over here in the heber pakhtunkhwa region we have uh, in heber pakhtunkhwa we have dry temperate forest over here which is um, in the which is north of koita in the ziarat range then we have scrub and semi desert vegetation which is in the indus plain then we have deserts in thar and cholistan and we have mangrove near the coastal area now i have uh, made this table and i have put everything over here so for example these are the natural vegetation which we have in pakistan and these are the locations so um well for observe um uh, if, if you've noticed that for scrub and semi desert vegetation i've written outside in this plane why exactly have i written even though a um, bit even though it shows that it is all over the indus plain now that is because it um indus plain originally basically had the scrub and semi desert vegetation but the farmers over there they basically converted those uh, that scrub and semi desert vegetation into a farmland through irrigation system right so uh, that land which has thorny thorny bushes was then converted into a fertile land so we can say that the natural environment was converted into the human environment now what are the uses of natural vegetation yeah, for for example we can have wood to make bridges to make buildings then paper and furniture there are two types of wood one is hardwood that we get from tropical rainforest the other is softwood that we get from coniferous forest then of course such natural vegetations they uh, serve as um, amazing tourist spots as well so people obviously love spending time uh, when they feel close to nature Uh, where they can easily the way they can feel close to nature then we have uh, they these natural vegetations also serve as habitats now what are, but uh, unfortunately in pakistan deforestation is something that people usually practice and why the reasons so we are going to discuss what are the reasons for deforestation number one is overgrazing so what is overgrazing so for, for example in an area where there is less vegetation and more animals so animals since they need food they will eat the plants till their roots so the chance that the tree will come out obviously decreases then we have increasing population of course we need more buildings more urbanization so more cutting of trees then farming of course for farm for farming you need a clear open area so you cut down trees so impacts of deforestation are global warming global warming why because when you have tr less trees then that means less carbon dioxide is take uh, is taken up by plants that means more carbon dioxide which is a greenhouse gas so it absorbs more heat so the temperature rises we have soil erosion less trees that means roots are, uh, are not over there to anchor the soil and when they are not over there then that means um, that means you know the wind and water can easily take away that soil um then we have loss of habitats as well fewer areas in which wildlife can live so these are the impacts of deforestation that's set from my side but remember it is very essential for all of you to go through the book 